Hello, everyone. Andy Jacob here with the dot-com magazine Entrepreneur Spotlight Series. I have a remarkable show today. You know, everybody that watches this show, everybody at dot-com magazine, we're so interested in health. And anytime I can get a great entrepreneur on the show talking about something that resonates for my my team and also the people that watch and listen to the show, I, I take a stab at it because it's just so interesting to have so many amazing entrepreneurs that are really changing the fabric of healthy society, of what we're all about on the inside, as well as, of course, the outside. So I had an opportunity recently to go through my Rolodex and come across someone named Jeffrey Harris. And you might even know about Jeffrey Harris. He has one of the most unique and amazing companies out there today. He is the co-founder and CEO of Plant Power Fast Food. And let me tell you, this is unbelievable. Think of it as sort of like the McDonald's or Burger King, but with 100% plant-based burgers, shakes, and fries. I mean, people are raving about this, this food that he's putting out there. It's amazing for the environment. It's amazing for the world. And more importantly, it's amazing for your inside. So I'm so excited to have Jeffrey on the show today. Jeffrey, welcome to the dot-com magazine Entrepreneur Spotlight Series. Thank you, Andy. It's great to be here with you today. Jeffrey, what you're doing is remarkable. I mean, you're impacting animals because you're not using animals and you're impacting health because you're not causing ill health. And your plant-based, you know, burgers use 99% less water, 93% less land and all these amazing statistics that are just making incredible headways into the world that we live. You have such a remarkable story. I'm going to get into it all, unravel it all, but to start, Let's pull the lens back to 30,000 feet and tell us about Plant Power Fast Food. Well, uh, Plant Power Fast Food was founded uh, with myself and my partners, Mitch Wallace and Zach Boga. And the three of us, before we even ever really met each other, uh, we're all ethical vegans. We are concerned about the well-being of animals. And before the three of us met each other, we had all had the same crazy idea, which I've often referred to as the vegan version of McDonald's or Burger King, or In-N-Out, or Jack in the Box, and whatever. And as vegans, you know, uh, when we drive by uh, all the fast food restaurants in our world, we just keep driving right on by. There's not much there for us. And before the three of us had met, each one of us had thought, how much impact could you have in the world, Uh, both for the benefit of animals, the planet, sustainability, and for people's health, if you had a plant-based, healthier version of traditional fast food? And so that's exactly who we are. So our menu looks like what you might expect at a Carl's Jr., Jack in the Box, Burger King, Um, you know, burgers, fries, shakes, uh, sandwiches, wraps, cheesecake, cookies, kids menu, everything that you would expect. Chicken tenders, although I'm going to use my air quotes since we're on video, chicken tenders, and it's all plant based. And so right away, there's zero cholesterol, right? Right off the bat. We don't use artificial uh, colors or flavorings or things like that. Um, we're very, very careful about the ingredients. We're mostly GMO free. We can't say 99% because God knows there might be something that sneaks past us. And uh, we really wanted to show the world something different. And the most significant thing I'd like to share is that most of our customers aren't vegans or vegetarians. Uh, they're what I like to call normal people, who, which is like most of my friends and most of the people that I know. And even though the founders and many members of our team have embraced a plant-based lifestyle out of concern for the, the animals or the planet or wellness. In fact, most of our customers are omnivores who are really looking to explore new ways of understanding food. They're looking at different choices. And I'll add that we specifically went into fast food because if we did create, you know, Jeffrey's brown rice and tofu veggie shack, I'd, I'd probably want to go there more often. That's my kind of a thing as an old hippie. But um, we really wanted to introduce plant-based food in a format that people are familiar with and comfortable with. It's less of a, of a jump into something strange. And also, it's a huge market in the U.S. And so for having impact, uh, the fast food world is where we thought we wanted to be. I love it, Jeffrey. I call it the future of fast food, 100% plant-based burgers, fries, and shakes. I mean, people are raving about this food. I mean, I 
I went to the website and I'm looking at the photos and I'm saying to myself, oh my gosh, why would I ever go to a, to one of the traditional fast food restaurants when I can go to your business? I mean, Jeffrey, what you've done is absolutely remarkable. It's expanding so fast. And so many people are talking about, you know, plant power, fast food, not only about the, how scrumptious and delicious the food is. And by the way, the photos are, are remarkable. I mean, I, I woke up this morning and I was saying, where's the closest one to me? And I'm in San Francisco. It's about 70 miles away. But right. I'm thinking about <laughs> taking a, a drive over there just today to eat some of that food. And it's worth it for the breakfast, too. So as, as, as great as the burgers and everything else is, oh, my God, the breakfast is kind of insane. You know, it's pretty cool. I love it, Jeffrey. Well, you have a great story and what you're doing is really remarkable. You know, you're really one of these entrepreneurs that really, you know, walking the walk, talking the talk, talking the talk, walking the walk, <laughs> because you started very early and you you really started with this plight of really loving animals at a very, very early age. And, you know, people that watch the show, Jeffrey, they know that Chris and I were big supporters of animal charities. And, nice. you know, we love the animals. We have dogs all the time. And and tell us, where did this come from, this passion for animals at an early age? And now here you are, you know, as an entrepreneur, putting all that passion to work. Thank you. Such a great question. Um you know, I, I think a lot of people love animals, actually. And, and I think actually most people love animals. What's not to love, right? And uh, when I was 14, um, I, I had this moment of reckoning that I think probably some kids have. And, and that is I suddenly realized that hamburgers were cows and that chicken, as advertised, was chicken. And I just realized, wait a minute. I mean, I, I had a, at that time a relationship with my dogs and I think we had a cat at that time. And I went, wait a minute, this is this is not good. And I, I looked around my world and I was the first uh, I became vegetarian when I was 14. I remember uh, asking my mom, we were having veal and I said, what is veal? And she told me. And that was kind of it for me. Um, years later, for the same reason, I became vegan because as a vegetarian, I didn't want to eat animals. I just went, why would we create the suffering if we don't have to? And of course, back in 1974, I'm aging myself. Uh, I, I thought I was the first vegetarian. Nobody told me that there's like India with hundreds of millions of them or, or hippies in Santa Cruz or wherever the vegetarians live. Uh, but I thought that, uh, well, you don't kill the cows for the milk or the chicken for the eggs. And then years later, as I became in, uh, in, uh, informed about the animal uh, industry and how animals really are treated as not as beings, but as products and the nature of their lives, I realized I couldn't participate in that as well. So, you know, and friends of mine thought I'm a, I'm a big animal lover. And I don't really think I am, or my partners, that we love animals more than anyone else does. A lot of people have dogs or cats that they love or other pets. But I realized that um, my actions were creating a tremendous amount of suffering um, to animals that had no control over their lives. They have no voice. And so my feeling was at the very, very least, let me stop contributing to that. That was that first step. And then years later, after I had some success in the corporate world, selling professional audio and sound equipment, um, I asked myself that question, hey, guy, what do you want to do when you grow up? Of course, I was in my late 40s, I think, or, you know, maybe almost 50 at the time. And, and I, this, this idea just kind of wouldn't let go of me. And then I was after a long search, found my partners who each in their own way had had that same idea. And, uh, and these guys, by the way, Mitch and Zach are the skilled operators without which none of this would have happened. You know, these guys are brilliant geniuses. I love it, Jeffrey. It's remarkable. Now let's, let's talk about the food because, you know, a restaurant doesn't go anywhere unless people love the food. And, you know, people are going to your restaurant, they, they buy, you know, one of your hamburgers, if we can call it even a hamburger, and then they eat one and then they have to take two home. I mean, they, they, they can't get enough of it. And, you know, your menu, it's 100% cholesterol free, no artificial colors, no artificial flavors, no hygienated oils, no high fructose corn syrup. I mean, you know, you're eating something that tastes so amazing, but you're not getting all the bad stuff that goes along with going to another fast food type restaurant, eating the real meat. So, who puts together these incredible sort of recipes? Who's designing the menu to make sure that people walk away as happy as they are right now at the company? 
Yeah, you know, um, originally when the three of us came together to start to build this thing, my partner Mitch Wallace was famous for what we believe might be, we don't know this, one of the first plant-based or vegan fast food restaurants in the U.S. called Evolution Fast Food. It's still there today in San Diego in the Hillcrest area. And um, so Mitch had developed uh, recipes over a number of many years. And, and Mitch was uh, a pioneer in this industry, right? I mean, he was opening vegan restaurants before any of us knew what the word vegan e even meant. And as a matter of fact, between him and, and Zach, the two of them probably have 20 or 30 years of, of uh, experience in vegan fast food, which is now this huge trend. So these guys are experts. So our, kind of our original DNA kind of came from Mitch's Evolution Fast Food Restaurant. And then Zach, um, who is our young, brilliant partner, took that as a foundation and really started doing uh, our food development, our R&D. Um, Zach came up, for example, with the Big Zach, which is our version of the Big Mac. And having been a McDonald's guy, I can tell you as a kid, my God, it tastes like the Big Mac. So Zach and his food and development team have done a, just a brilliant job of trying out various things over the years. And sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't. And sometimes we had something that I loved, but the customers didn't respond and it went away. And over the years, over the last six and a half, seven years, that menu has evolved. And it really is uh, amazing, you know, right now. I mean, I'll go to a restaurant and do meetings and work off my computer for a day and you know, start out with a breakfast thing. And a few hours later, I'll get a lunch thing. And uh, so uh, it, the menu itself has evolved. And Zach was very particular about we're not going to use um, the Impossible Burger or the Beyond Burger. We're going to create our own um, proprietary products. And that was very, very important to us. And as a result of that, we were able to come up with stuff that really hasn't been done before, including all of our own sauces, and our own dressing. So I got to give um, that initial food development credit, the props to Mitch, who really created that foundation. And then Zach Voga has really, as our food and development lead with his team, has just done a phenomenal job of taking it to the next level. He's also our COO and has built out operations in a way that I think is unparalleled in kind of the natural food space right now. I love it, Jeffrey. And of course, you and Mitch and Zach, I mean, you're building something that's going to be here for a long time. I mean, you're going into a nationwide, probably an international footprint eventually. I know you've got your set sight on some amazing things. And for the entrepreneurs watching the show, listen to what Jeffrey's saying, because they're very proud of their team. I mean, they hire great people. Uh, the people at the various restaurants right now are, you know, the best in the business. They're really passionate about what they do. And something that's so interesting when I walk into one of your restaurants and I'm looking at sort of the tables, let's just say, and even the booths, I mean, they're made of renewable bamboo instead of wood. I mean, the whole thing is sort of set up in such a powerful and meaningful way. How did you come up with this whole concept with all the way going down to, for, for example, the takeout um, recyclable products? How did you come up with the whole idea? Well, you know, we wanted to uh, have a positive impact not only on the lives of animals that we're taking off the plate, but the planet itself, right? And there's just, there's the, the way we as mankind or humankind is living on the planet now is completely insane and unsustainable. I mean, just as one example, uh, the plastic where you go to a restaurant, you get something to go, they give you plastic forks and spoons, maybe use the fork. And at the end of the day, you throw these plastic things into the trash. If you're lucky, you've got some way to recycle it. It doesn't make any sense at all. There's thousands of ways of ways to do this. So as one example, um, the uh, forks, the, the disposable plastic looking forks, spoons and knives that we have are actually made from plant based materials and they will ev eventually biodegrade. Now, it's not like you drop them in the dirt and they, they just kind of turn to dust right away, but they're not plastic. They're not going to be there for 10,000 years. They're not going to be in the ocean forever. Um, and most of our products were also using um, what stuff that looks like plastic, but that is not, it's actually plant-based. There's a few areas where we haven't been able to do that yet. Right. And we're making as much progress as we can. We've got solar power now at our Long Beach restaurant, but we haven't done that across the enterprise yet. And we're looking for ways to do that. So what, what we're trying to do is explore ways to be sustainable as much as we can. Uh, sometimes we're limited by local municipalities and whatever their recycling requirements are and things like that. It just like, um, you know, Elon Musk coming up with electric cars and pushing it forward. Electric cars are brilliant 
because you can take the energy from bad energy, coal, you know, petrol, but you can also take that energy from clean energy, you know, wind or solar and get it in that electric car. But the infrastructure you know, needs to catch up, right? The chargers and all the places that people can go. So in the same way, um, we're doing as much as we can. We hope to be a force for good and inspire um, various municipalities and cities to, to uh, you know, support more and more of this vision of sustainability. Uh, we're not perfect, but we're really motivated by the idea of demonstrating positive change. So it's not just us, right? We want to show that this works to others. And in fact, and I don't know if we're responsible for this, but we started, we opened our first restaurant in 2016. Well, in recent years, Carl's Jr. brought on the, um, the Beyond Meat Burger, Beyond a Burger, right? Beyond, and then uh, Burger King, The Impossible, and then KFC with plant-based options, and then Del Taco. So we see that there's a mega trend and that that mega trend is reflective of the aspirational uh, movement in the minds of the consumer who would like to be part of a solution rather than a problem. And so a lot of people, if you give them that option, right, here's a vegan burger that is more sustainable and it's just as delicious versus uh, a meat-based burger, a lot of people will choose that veggie burger. And a lot of them don't want to sign up and be identified as vegans. They don't want to come out as vegan at their uh, family's Thanksgiving. But if you give them a choice and if you make it easier, more and more people will make that more sustainable, healthier, cruelty-free choice because someplace in their soul that they know that that's better for themselves and, and for everyone. And that's what we're trying to demonstrate. I love it, Jeffrey. It resonates so greatly for me. You know, there's so many people that they're going into your restaurant and they're, let's say, getting the Big Zach versus the Big Mac. And they're, they're out of their minds about it. They can't believe how great the food tastes. I mean, it, it's remarkable. So, so they may not be thinking about the fact that this plant-based burger uses 99% less water. They might not be thinking that it uses 93% less land or 46% less energy or even, you know, uh, has 90% less greenhouse emissions. They're only thinking about the fact that, man, this thing tastes so good and I'm addicted to it and I have to keep coming back. And what's happening is they love it so much, their insides are changing. And then mm. maybe what happens is their thoughts start changing a little bit as well in the macro sense. And I love that so much. And it just, it resonates so much that you're really changing the world, really one big zack at a time, I guess we could say. So, Jeffrey, let's talk about entrepreneurship, because I know you've got your site set on expansion. I know you've got uh, nine restaurants, soon to be 10, I think, in the next week or so. You've got a, yeah. a, a food uh, truck that goes around and, you know, there's lines, you know, all the way down the block to try and get those Big Zach burgers and everything else, the fries and the desserts and everything else. And, you have, of course, you have breakfast as well. So when we think about it, where is this going? Because you know, I also stay in Arizona. And if I don't have one of these, you know, plant power fast foods in Arizona within the next few months, I think I'm going to go crazy because it just looks so good. We're working on that for you, by the way, Andy, just letting you know, we, we got Arizona on our sites. Um, the bottom line is, um, let me let me go 30,000 feet and then we'll talk about plant power. So back in 2016, when we started and we were trying to hustle money for our first restaurant, and that was a that was a rough hill to climb, Right. Because any any smart advisor, attorney, accountant is going to tell these people, please don't invest in a vegan restaurant. That's so dumb. We knew that. Right. But the, the story that I was telling back then, and I'm still telling it now, and now people are starting to see it, is that there will be this mega trend is real. Right. The plant based. And by the way, for any of you who are watching right now and you're curious about it, just Google plant based mega trend and there'll be a thousand articles and you can see what I'm talking about. This is a massive trend possibly over time, like as significant as the internet. I'm probably going to get in trouble for saying that. But anyway, it's a big trend. Let's just say that. So there's no doubt in my mind, and I, I know that Zach and then Mitch see this as well, there will be a major brand that captures that plant-based McDonald's space. There may be several. There's no question that this is where the world is going. When, you know, I, I watched the movie, The Founder um, with Michael Keaton. Have you seen that? 
Yes. Um, it's a great film about Roy Kroc, who created McDonald's, who is a bit of a I don't know if I could say this on your show, a bit of an ass, but definitely a visionary as well. He understood that something had shifted. He, you know, he brought uh, the Ford kind of uh, assembly line fashion to fast food and really revolutionized it. And probably a lot of people thought, well, he got it. That's it. No, that wasn't it. He created a new segment. And now we saw all the other people jump into that segment. So we we know there's no question that there will be a plant based version of these major brands out there. It may be plant power fast food. I believe that it will be. It may be someone else. It may be multiple brands that begin to capture that space. You may even have some mature companies like Burger King or McDonald's try to capture that market by creating a new brand that addresses the aspirational consumer. So there's a lot of ways that that can go. However, our job right now is try to be number one in that segment. And so at the moment, we're doing okay, right? We started with one in 2016. Um, by next Friday, we'll have 10. We've got, uh, I think, three or four more in development, maybe another 20 in the franchise development pipeline. Um, but we're really just getting started. And uh, there's two ways to look at it. One is, oh my God, we've come a long way and we've worked hard, right? Mitch and Zach and I and our amazing team, we work crazy, right? So, the, so I think that there's a reason to celebrate how far we've come. But one way to look at it is that we've just reached base camp. We have not hit the summit yet. And we are all motivated to, to be part of creating a change in the world. And the way that you create a change in the world is by having as much impact as possible with as many people as possible. And so the way that we look at that is we want to take off as many animals off the plate as we can. We want to touch the, the hearts of millions and millions of consumers and drop that little seed about plant-based, right? We also have investors now. So we have to grow as a company and we have to reward the people that have come with us along the way. Same thing with our team. We can only really reward our team and create grow uh, 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 paths for them to grow and evolve with us if we continue to expand. So when we look at this whole thing, it seems like the only way to go is big and it's scary. Um, but in the last few years, we've taken some really big steps towards that. We've hired our new director of operations is from Chipotle. Very, very experienced professional. Um, our new um, and his name is Dan Lowe. Our new director of new restaurant openings is Rita Ugarte who's from Yum Brands and Hard Rock Cafe and Mimi's. And the list goes on and on. We've got a CFO now uh, from the fast food industry at Har, who really has that experience with multi-level franchise or franchisee models. And I can go on, by the way, so many great people to talk about. So we've been building the team of people who have done this before and will be continuing to do that. And we're looking at new ways to finance as we grow. Uh, and, you know, there's a million things to do every day and we really don't have all the answers. But the one thing that we're really sure about is the mission and the intention and the fact that the world needs something like this now. Plant power fast food on its own is not going to change the world. But the 50 or the 100 or the 300 companies like ours who are bringing more sustainable, compassionate uh, models to the world, we together will have a, a, an impact and will make a difference. So I think we're part of a revolution and the way for us to carry our, our weight there is to grow. And we have plans to grow rapidly. I love it, Jeffrey. You know, earlier in the show, you mentioned you're an old hippie. I guess <laughs> I'm an old hippie as well. And and when I listen to you speak and for the entrepreneurs watching the show, rewind what Jeffrey's saying, you sound more like a Harvard MBA professor versus an old hippie. So you've been able to bridge the gap both ways. So congratulations. That's this could amazing. be a bad sign though. Maybe I, I didn't really smoke enough weed in the seventies. I'm not sure. <laughs> right, you know, but right. you know, thank you for saying that. And, and the key is for the entrepreneurs who are watching, right? Um, obviously for many who choose the, the way of the entrepreneur, one of the things that they're trying to create in their lives is abundance and wellness and people look at money different ways for some, maybe it's a mansion or a Maserati for most of us. It's time, you know, with our loved ones and, and wanting to have more control over our destiny. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm familiar with all the, the new agey books that say, follow your bliss. But now I see how true it is. So if you really do have some intention that you can you can sink your teeth into, and it might just be creating something wonderful for your family. So your kids go to college. 
or it might be in our case, we want to take animals off the plate. We, we really do want to close down the slaughterhouses, right? But whatever your intention is, stick with that as much as you can. You know, my struggle as a human being is that I can get into my ego and start thinking, oh my God, maybe one day I'll make money and maybe one day I'll be cool and blah, blah, blah. Of course, it's really natural, especially if we start to have some success. But I think the, the thing that all of us need to keep to be mindful of is keep coming back to the intention and the work again and again and to the team. Right. And to make sure that the people that have joined your vision are being properly compensated and that they are being acknowledged and appreciated. So if you take your eyes off the real prize, right, uh, you can get distracted and there's so much work to do. So I think that coming back to the intention over and over again is really key. I know that that's been true for myself um, and with Mitch, with Zach and, and Lori and Jenny. And I could I could name 50 more people, people that have been with us since the beginning. Um, We keep coming back to why the why that's something my partner, Zach, talks about. He goes, what's the why? And so I think I think the why has always been key for us. I love it, Jeffrey. I know you've only sliced out a certain amount of time today, but I have I have one final question. And I'm going to talk about this guitar over your left (laughs) shoulder, because I know you play guitar. I know you're a musician. I know you've been around other musicians. You've had some incredible jam sessions you know, uh, based on our pre-phone call uh, with at your home, you know, throughout the years. And let's talk about what an entrepreneur can learn from playing the guitar. And what I mean by that is when you pick up a guitar, you don't just play the song perfectly the first time. Just like an entrepreneur who's in a startup, they don't make every single note perfect the first time. But as you play the guitar, you get better. The same as being an entrepreneur, you get better. So let's talk about what perhaps your music career, if I can call it that, has taught you about entrepreneurship so that you can teach something to the entrepreneurs watching the show. That's great. First of all, uh, it was a trick question, right? We didn't discuss this before. So you're in violation of some kind of contract someplace. But number two, thanks for taking a long time to ask the question. So you gave me a chance to think about the answer, right? Um and you know what came up for me is this, is that and I'm, I'm honestly not that great a guitar player, but I can I can move around. And the way I learned was by fiddling about for hours and hours and hours and hours. And um, and the, I think that the analogy towards being a successful entrepreneur is sustained focus, sustained focus. Like when we were kids, we would take a magnifying glass and shine the light of the sun through it, and we could burn leaves and stuff. I don't know if you ever did that. Boys, we like to do destroy things, right? So you're taking that energy of the sun that's that's quite diverse, and you're focusing it onto a single point, and then it has all this power, and it can burn leaves or twigs or things like that. And um, the way I learned the guitar was sustained focus. In other words, I fell in love with it, right? I woke up thinking, I want to play the guitar today. I woke up thinking... <clears throat> I want to learn a new chord and, and I couldn't wait to get to it. And by the way, these days, my guitar does not get as much love as it used to get. It's, it's lonely. It's angry at me. I'm, I'm quite sure. But I think that when we, um, and entrepreneurs know what I'm talking about. We, if it goes well, we fall in love with the process of our mission and doing what we're doing. And my girlfriend knows, cause I'm up sometimes at four, four 30 in the morning. I suddenly have a, uh, a vision in my head about how a certain spreadsheet needs to be done. Now, this is boring stuff, but in my world, um, that kind of sustained focus, that interest, that curiosity um, results in things. You have breakthroughs where you couldn't see them before, but if you stay focused, you'll have that breakthrough. So that's my guitar analogy to the best of my ability, I'm trying to keep my headset from falling out here. And, uh, and uh, for anyone who's watching uh, and who knows me, uh, I, I look better in photos on Facebook playing the guitar than I actually sound playing the guitar in real life. So I just want to, I want to do that disclosure, full disclosure. I love it, Jeffrey. What a great answer to a sidewinder question because (laughs) I've never had an entrepreneur sort of connect playing guitar or music to entrepreneurship, but it makes sense. And people who are entrepreneurs watching the show, they're going to get exactly what you're saying that you need to focus in and you need to really, you know, be in business. When you're in business, you need to be in business. You can't be outside the business looking in. And I think that's what you're saying. 
This is just a remarkable interview. I'm definitely going to have you back on the show as you continue to grow. Congratulations, Jeffrey, to what you're doing. And of course, to Mitch and Zach uh, with the team and all the new uh, people that are coming on board that are just super high profile and powerful people in their respective spaces to be able to put this sort of umbrella of incredible people together to help you, you know, move plant power fast food forward in the way that's going to be meaningful as part of this mega trend. You might not be just part of a mega trend. You might be the mega trend. So that's so exciting. Jeffrey, this is great. And I am just so delighted to have you on the show. It's been just remarkable for the entrepreneurs watching the show. There are so many keys that Jeffrey mentioned throughout the show. You need to rewind it and watch it again. I know I'm going to watch it again once the interview is over because some things resonate for me. And I learned so much just from talking to Jeffrey about what I can do in my life and my business, you know, from the perspective of an entrepreneur, but also what am I doing to make a difference? Like, mm -hmm. like Jeffrey's partner says, what's the why? What is my why? And then what's that going to do to implore me to move forward in a much more powerful and productive way for our society and our world? So Jeffrey, I'm sure that came through for everybody watching the show today. And I wanted to take a minute to thank you so much for coming on the dot com magazine entrepreneur spotlight series thank you andy it was a joy